Kia ora Year 12 and 13. This is the first half of question 1 of last year's scholarship calculus paper. So as usual, if you have a go at the question before you watch the video, you'll get a lot more out of it. This is all about something called a solid of revolution, and this is something that we used to teach, well I didn't used to teach, but used to be taught in calculus at level 3. So here's the basic bad graph. This is some function, f of x, and we're used to working with that in two dimensions. But I want you now to imagine that instead of working in two dimensions, we take this line here and we rotate it around the x-axis. And we might do that between two particular values. So what we're going to get is some kind of quite funky three-dimensional shape. And of course you can't see the end of that because I've drawn that on the bottom of the slide, but you can imagine that it's going to form something like a weird vase with a flat base, right? So flat base there. And we can do two things with that. We can find the volume of that really easily, um, and we can find the surface area. And this question is about the surface area of a solid of revolution. Right? So reading along here, a solid of revolution is a 3D figure formed by revolving a plane area around a given axis. So the plane area in my graph would be that there. Right? So we're going to take that and we're going to rotate it. Now the surface area of a solid of revolution can be found with this formula here. And we're asked to find the area of the surface of revolution, in other words, the surface area, obtained when the graph of this function is rotated or revolved 360 degrees around the x-axis. And we're given these limits of integration. So this question is just about applying an unknown formula to a problem. So my limits are going to be my b and my a, and my function is going to be substituted in here, and its derivative in here. So have a go at that now, and I'll, I'll work through it on the next slide. Okay, so I'm going to start by writing down what we're after, which is s is equal to 2 pi times this integral. Right, so that's my first derivative squared integrated with respect to x. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of the algebra work before I start working with the integral. So I'm going to work up to this term here as follows. So here's f of x, and that's x cubed plus 1 over 12x, which we'll rewrite to have x to the negative 1. The first derivative is 3x squared minus 1 twelfth x to the negative 2. So I'm just layering this up. Right, so f of x squared is going to equal that thing squared. So I'll write that in. Uh, I haven't left enough room. Um, I'm going to write this back with the x squared on the bottom. Okay, so we've got 3x squared minus 1 over 12x squared. Now, I'm not seeing where this is going yet, so I'm going to expand that out and see what happens. Right, so we're going to get 9x to the power of 4 minus, hmm, if I do these two, I'm get, going to get minus 1 quarter. And of course, if I do those two, I'll get minus another quarter. Lastly, I'll get plus 1 over 144x to the power of 4. Right, now I can see that in the integral I want to have that thing squared, which we've done, plus 1. So now let's do 1 plus that. So that's going to give me 9x to the power of 4. This bit here is minus a half, so if I add 1 I'm going to end up with plus a half, plus 1 over 144 x to the power of 4. Now, it's probably about time that I stuck that back into the integral and had a, a think about how I can ever manage to integrate such an ugly looking thing. So this is what we've got so far. We've got s equals 2 pi integrated between 3 and 1 
here's my function x cubed plus 1 over 12x. And now I've got the square root of 9x to the 4 plus 1 half plus 1 over 144x to the power of 4 dx. Now I think I've said in just about every scholarship session this year that everything in Skull Calc turns into a quadratic eventually, and it does here as well. So if we look at what's under that square root sign, this is what we see. This thing here, we want to try and see if it's a perfect square, because if it is, we can take the square root very easily. And it turns out that this will be 3x squared, you can have a plus and a plus, you can see that this is a squared term here, so plus 1 over 12x squared. So there we go, so this problem suddenly got really straightforward, basically back to probably about achieved level 3. So 2 pi times 3 and a 1, I'll leave that sitting there. The square root of that thing is just this, 3x squared plus 1 over 12x squared dx. So now we just have a little bit of expanding, but nothing too bad. So let's expand that out slowly. We'll get 3x to the power of 5 plus, now doing these two, that's going to give me 1 quarter of x. Right now we'll do this one here. This is going to give me 1 twelfth of x. And that last term is going to give me a slightly annoying 1 over 144 x to the power of 3 dx. So what we've got to integrate now is just a polynomial that you could do in year 12. So I'm going to do that on the next slide. Okay, so that equals 2 pi times um, that. This one, the first term goes up to 1 half x to the power of 6. Um, putting the next two together, and I get one term in x. So I've skipped, I skipped a line in here, but I don't think that's going to hurt anyone. Um, just ask me in class if you get stuck on this bit, but I don't think you will. There's 1 sixth x squared, and lastly we're going to have 1 over 288 x to the negative 2, and we want to integrate that between 3 and 1. Okay, so that's going to give me 2 pi times, and this is where you guys are going to get your graphics calculator out, but I'm going to do it by hand, because I'm at home, and my calculator is at school. There, that's the first bit, I think that's right. Uh, yeah, so... 3 to the power of 6 is 729, so half of that is this. And then I'm, I'm not going to attempt that bit there, I'll just leave that like that. Minus 1 half of 1 squared plus 1 sixth plus 1 over 288. Right, so if we evaluate that, we are going to get... 2295.5 um, and that's to 1dp. Right now I'm going to confess that I actually just grabbed that number out of the schedule, the answer schedule. I haven't checked it but I am sure that that's correct. So hope that helped. That was quite a nice little question that looks, as usual, it looks awful but all you've got to do is break it down step by step, substitute in, um, look for the perfect squares and look for the um, polynomial that you're going to end up with. Thanks for watching, there'll be another one coming shortly.